Hey everyone, in my last video about making spirals, I asked if you'd like to learn more about distortion and people seemed into the idea, so that's what we're doing. Let's get started. So in my scene right now, we just have a plane and some lighting. And by default, your texture starts with this principled BSDF. And we're just going to delete that. And I'm just going to plug in this uh, checker texture using um, object texture coordinates. So if we mess around with this mapping node right here, um, you can start to visualize what all of these parameters do. Um, the X and Y location basically just translate this texture. And the rest of them are kind of hard to visualize because this is actually a 3D texture. So one way that's easier to visualize it is to view it as a volume. So this is what we're going to be plugging into the volume. It's just black and white. So if we set the checker texture to have a scale of 1, it would just be this pattern from the top. But if we make it volumetrics, you can see that it's actually made of a bunch of cubes. So when you move this Z location, it's actually moving the cubes up and down. And same with the rotation, too. It's just moving it in 3D space. And basically, the idea of this whole video is that we're going to be controlling all of these parameters. But instead of messing with them directly like this, we're going to plug textures in to control them. So the first texture we're going to use is a Voronoi. Specifically, we're going to use this color option right here. And I'm just going to turn randomness all the way down. And you can see that each cell is a different RGB value by default. And when we run it through a math node, multiplying it by 1, the values for red, green, and blue are made the same number, which turns them from color to grayscale. So now each cell has a grayscale value between 1 and 0, where 1 is white and 0 is black. So if we plug this texture into the location, it controls how much the location is moving, and the texture also tells it where it should move. And if we don't want the location to be moved by this, we change the multiply to 0. Anything multiplied by 0 equals 0, so all the cells are black and have a value of 0 now and zero is the default value for our location. So it's like nothing happened. This is the basis for the whole video. Another thing real quick, when we multiply our texture, it only shows black and white, but the values will go above one and below zero. You can check off this clamp option, which will make any values stay between one and zero instead of going over and under like this. So you can pretty much just plug this directly into one of these slots right here, and it will distort it and you can use the multiplication to control how much you actually want to distort. But if you want to have a little more control, I recommend using this combine XYZ node. So say, for instance, you only want it to move up and down like that. You just take that value, plug it into the Y, and then plug it into here. So the only thing being affected is the Y value, and the rest are 0. So if you set this to 0 and slowly move it up, you can see that it's only be dis being distorted in one axis like that. And the same goes for rotation. Um, the x and the y look pretty weird on this uh, two-dimensional plane. The only one that really makes sense to me anyway is the rotation right here. So we can just change this to z and plug that in here. And then you can see it's like rotating around the center like that. One thing that's kind of weird is you control the rotation with degrees. Um, but the value in here is actually not in degrees. Um, it's in a different unit called radians. And so if you do actually want to control uh, on this side with degrees, you have to do this operation right here. And the top value would be the amount of degrees. If you want to know more about the difference between degrees and radians, uh, you can check out this Wikipedia page. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you want to plug this into scale, it's not going to look right. Um, because the default scale value is 1. So if you have this set to 0, it's going to look a little weird. So you need to change this from multiply to multiply and add, and then make sure the second value is 1. So basically, it's doing the multiplication and then adding 1. So if you have this shut off set to 0, this value right here, then um, it adds 1 to it, making everything in here uh, a value of 1 instead of 0. And so I've only shown the color option for this Voronoi texture so far, but you can really do it with any texture. For instance, you could use the dip distance option too, and it's just going to make the result much smoother like this.
another texture that's good for this is the gradient texture. So right here, I just have a spherical texture. And if you want to adjust the size of it, you just have to hook up a, a mapping node before it like that. And then you can change the scale and the location and all that. So if we plug everything in like we did before, you can see that it's a much smoother transition. And it's all based being distorted based on this texture right here. You could really use any of these options in here. Um, the ones that I usually go for are spherical, radial, and linear. So with this one, the black spots would be unaltered because it's a value of zero. And then where it's white, it would be pushed by one. And in between, it would just be a gradual change. So by default, all of these have a linear interpolation. And if you want it to be even more smooth, um, you can use a color ramp set to ease and put it in here. And you can see now it's like curving around the edges a little smoother. Whereas before, when this is set to linear, it just is a sharp transition. And it's made a little more apparent when we change the scale of our texture like that. Another texture to use for distortion that I think is really good is just the noise texture. And it basically can just be used to make uh, your existing texture a little more irregular. So the way I like to do it is to plug it into location, and I'll show you why. So when we plug it into location, you can't tell that it's being distorted from any one spot. Whereas if we plug it into the rotation, you can tell that everything's kind of rotating around the center point right there. And same with scale, it all scales from the center like that. So using the location makes the distortion look a little more uniform, but you can still have a cool effect if you do use rotation or scale. For instance, if you use rotation, you can make it look like the center is pretty normal and the outsides get distorted. And if you turn your noise scale up really high, it just kind of starts to look like it's, uh, like it's blurring around the edges. I think that's kind of a cool look. If you're trying to get some distortion without going through all these steps, the easiest way to do that, I think, is the mix RGB node. We just want to plug this into the first color slot. And then we can plug this noise texture in to the second color slot right here. And this factor slider will control how much it's being distorted. And if we turn the factor all the way down, it's our normal uh, object texture coordinate. And if we turn it all the way up, it's using the noise texture instead of the object texture. This technique can really be used in a lot of different ways, including on photos, like in this situation where we're using it on an HDRI. So that's all I have for right now. If you're looking for more stuff like this, check out Lance Fan's channel on YouTube. They have some really good stuff like this that's a little more advanced. If you found this helpful, consider giving me a like and subscribe, and check me out on Instagram if you want to see what else I'm doing. That's it. Thanks for watching.